duty, not devotion. What you give, you need to want to give it. You need to say, because I am in relationship with, I am in relationship with the God of heaven, and because God has granted me life today, and because God has blessed me, and as Tom was mentioning earlier, as we seek God His kingdom and righteousness first, we see all these other things being coming our way. We're being blessed. So again, it's devotion, not duty. So as you have purpose, Paul said in 1 Corinthians 16, 2, and, and Daniel purposes, I remember when, when Daniel and the three other Hebrew children were taken and captives and into slavery, the Bible says that ahead of time he decided, he made up his mind, he made a decision ahead of time, he purposed in his heart that he would not contaminate himself with the king's food. And if you want to, if you want to be prepared for decisions, for making the right decisions, the right choices, then make a decision ahead of time. Uh, it's like my church. You don't decide to go to church on Sunday morning. You decide to go to church ahead of time. Amen. Like, like prayer and, and, and like Bible study. You don't decide to do it if you have, don't have anything else to do. If you plan ahead of time, I'm going to. The Bible is going to be a part of my reading on a daily basis. Prayer is, going to, is a part of my life. And when it comes to the stewardship, it's not a matter if I have something left over. No, God is priority in my life. So your purpose in your heart. King David said as, as he was thinking of uh, building, he said, I will not offer a burnt offering to the Lord my God that that which caused me nothing. In other words, uh, it's got to be valuable to me. I've got to feel that I'm contributing something significant to the kingdom and the extension of God's kingdom. Abraham was willing to offer his son, Isaac. In spite of reason, he went with faith. And in spite of uh, thinking all kinds of stuff, you know, Abraham and Sarah had a, a son who was promised at a later age, and most of you know, they tell us that Sarah was around 90 years old and Abraham was about 100. Uh, and and my, here comes Isaac, right? And God has only told him he's a son of promise, as numerous as the sand, and as numerous as the stars in the sky. That would be your descendant. But he was only son. And now he has a word from God that he's to offer him as a sacrifice. Really, as you know, now that you can read on, it was just a test. And he passed the test, right? I mean, we read and he passed the test. He's known as the father of faith. But he left us a legacy, yes or no? Amen. He left us a good legacy. He left us a good example. And so again, he had to decide that you and I also must decide. So second, let's go to the second major point. Uh, genuine worship becomes something pleasant to others. Not only is it something precious to us, because it's the first fruit, but also something pleasant to others. The Bible says that the house was filled with the fragrance of you. The, the aroma, another translation says. The fragrance, the aroma of the oil. The word pleasant basically is something enjoyable, something pleasing. Like when someone walks by you and they've got this nice cologne, nice perfume, or, or they took a nice shower and they did. And it's pleasant, it's not repentant. <laughs> uh, it's pleasant, it's pleasing, it's nice, it's pleasurable, it's congenial, it enhances relationship to where when it's, when it's unpleasant. It is repugnant, it's repelling, it kind of pushes away. But whenever you worship the Lord, instead of being repentant and repelling, it's attracting it. It's pleasant and people want it. And that's why the, the Bible says many Jews, many Jews came. In, in chapter 11 and chapter 12, many Jews came. Something was compelling them, bringing them, bringing them. Good examples manifest our commitment and enhance our testimonies. Can, can you say amen to that? Good examples manifest, the word manifest basically allows people to see our level of commitment. And I think we owe that to our boys and girls. I think we owe that to the next generation. Your level of commitment needs to be obvious to, to the next, those teenagers, those boys and girls. They need to know that you're not, you're not dancing uh, with demons on Saturday trying to worship Jesus on Sunday. No, there's a level of commitment. You love God and you show God and you show Him. You show your daughter, you show your son, you show your kid, you show your neighbor by your commitment. See? So again, uh, it's a level of commitment. Good examples manifest our commitment and enhances our testimony. One of the best ways to avoid being called a hypocrite is to practice what you preach. Amen? Mm -hmm. Yes or no? Amen. <laughs> Many of us have been tripped up by bad examples. Uh, and, and yet, they, 
God for the good examples. Good examples. I have a good concept of God because I, I, I believe I had a wholesome relationship with a good daddy. My, my dad had a good wholesome outlook on life. And I believe that enhanced my relationship with God. I don't have this book picture of a mean God or, or a mad God or a God that's out to get you or know, whack you over the head. No. I have a good picture of God because I have a good picture of a daddy here on earth. But sometimes if a daddy is overbearing or, or, or very dictator type or very mean, you, you kind of have trouble. Uh, if mama is very domineering, she's bossy, she controls dad and controls everybody, you have a bad picture. And sometimes bad testimony or bad examples trip people up. It trips keep kids up. We've had situations even in churches where people get into fights and they say nasty and awful things to each other and boys and girls are listening and, and it trips them up and they want, it, want nothing to do with church. And as soon as they can, they make a big line out of the church. So good examples manifest your commitment. It enhances our testimony. It enhances basically means to improve. It adds to. It increases. And in this case, we want to increase the flock. The Bible talks about the fragrance of life. That aroma of life. That's what we are in 2 Corinthians 2.14. We're to everywhere we go, we're to admit, we're to let out. So it's like when you when you go into an area and, uh, and maybe there's a bad odor. And you take out a, 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 a bottle of uh, uh, air freshener and you don't. And, and just that, and it kind of changes things, right? And see, you are so blessed by God that if you enjoy your relationship with God, Wherever you walk in, you can admit, you can let out the freshness of the beauty and the holiness of God. You need a help. What do you do? Somebody say, I want to be a help. I want to help. Amen. So worship. It all starts with worship. Worship of him who, who is worthy of something precious and it's something pleasant. Number three, genuine worship will be, will be disturbing or perturbing to some. Chirping and say it's really something not what's it bothers. First of all, it bothers the devil. Second, it bothers the demons. Second, it bothers carnal Christians. It bothers people. It bothers people. It may bother people who are outside, it may bother people who are inside. In this case, it bothered somebody who was in the inner room. Judas is carrying. You know that not everything that glitters is gold, right? But one of his disciples. One of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, who was later to betray him, objected. Whoa, 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 whoa. Do you have any idea how many tamales you can buy with 300 denarii? How many people we could take out to lunch? Sometimes we camouflage. You know, but by saying something nice, we really have something else in mind. And it's right here in the text. Why wasn't this perfume sold and the money given to the poor? That's a good question. But he wasn't concerned for the poor. Isn't it true that sometimes you can read between the lines? Somebody will like, Isn't it true that sometimes you can see behind that? And when you've got a heavenly perspective, which the Lord does, he pretty much has it covered, right? He sees everything, yes? Nor does he get it. Why wasn't this perfume sold and the money given to the poor? It's worth a year's wages. He did not say this because he cared. And again, this is inspired. I'm only the, 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 the errand boy here. I'm only the runner. I'm reading right on the text. He did not say this because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. And as the keeper of the money bag, he used to help himself to what was put into it. There's the word. But note the inconsistency. Note the inconsistency. Money given to the poor. Yeah, he used to help himself with what was put into the bag. Really consistent there. Concern, it wasn't for the poor, it was for himself. See, the more we give, the less it stays in the bag, and the less I have to take it. He was inconsistent. Now, a good, honoring lifestyle, a good, honoring lifestyle is, is, uh, is one that wants to talk. Um, a, a credibility is short, but we are inconsistent, yes or no? Amen. Is, isn't it true? Would you agree that our credibility is short, but we are inconsistent? Amen. Uh, I mean, it happens. That's why people have a bad rap about churches today. We are told, you know, the census has gone out, that, that uh, 
the millennial, millennial that's the kid born between 1980 to the present, it's not that they don't believe in God. They don't believe in the church of God. It's not that they're rejecting Jesus. They're rejecting the church of Jesus. That's us. They're, they're kind of they're put off with some of the stuff that you and I do. And that's why we go back to worship. Don't just serve God. Worship God as you serve Him. Because I believe that when you worship God, you will want to serve Him. When you worship God, you will want to have fellowship with Him and His people. But if you just serve, after a while you cry out. And you can become mean. You can become nasty. You can become something. So worship is a part of your It has to be a part of your service. And again, fellowship is not just a matter of having a party. It's a matter of worshiping so you can enjoy the party. A god honoring lifestyle gift many times exposes the phoniness in some people as they begin to murmur like Judas. And it wouldn't be, wouldn't it be wonderful if every daddy and every mom just loved Jesus so much that they would serve the Lord with a glad Oh, we would experience a tremendous revival. Last night when I got on my knees, I said to the Father, Father, would you send us a something special for a white Avenue Baptist Church that, that all of us would experience this fresh breath from heaven and we would want to worship you with all of our hearts, with all of our soul, and with all of our minds. Now, Judas called Mary's gift or the offering of waste. He actually said, so he said, Matthew chapter 26, verse 8. He actually said that what Mary had given was a waste. <laughs> Jesus didn't see it like that. He didn't see it as a waste. He saw it as an investment. In fact, he said, she has done something beautiful for me. He has done something, she has done something good. Man, many speak not with their lips, but with their lives or their children. Now, the question is, what is your message? What is your life message? Fourth, as we come to wrap this up, genuine worship is always pleasing to the Lord. Always pleasing to the Lord. <laughs> Remember, he doesn't have this kind of view. He's got a kind of view. And he sees the, not only does he see the gift, but he sees the heart. Remember when the boy, widow brought the, the widow's mind? It wasn't the amount that she gave, it's that she gave with all of her heart. See? And that's what he sees. Leave her alone, he said. When they were criticizing what she was doing, leave her alone. That's an imperative. It was like, I mean, he was strong. Leave her alone. Only one voice in her favor. It was heard loud and clear in that house that night. It was the voice that really counted. Because it was the voice of the Lord Jesus Christ. Man, don't you think it's wonderful when Jesus can speak up for you? It's okay, my son. It's okay, my daughter. Leave him alone. Leave her alone. He has done. She has done something beautiful for me. And the first one will be hot and trust as a devil trying to discourage you from worshiping the Lord with all your heart. Why are you bothering this woman, he asked. She has done a beautiful thing to me. Matthew 26, verse 10. And when we give something that is precious to us, it is always pleasing to Him. When I give something that is a leftover, insignificant, or if I have time, then guess what? It is not pleasing to Him. As an underlining reminder, let me tell us as a church, as a family, first of all, find, first, you give yourself to the Lord, the Bible says. The Bible says they gave themselves first to the Lord. You first, that's where you start. You cannot fake it and expect to really come out of hand. But you give yourself first to the Lord. Then after you, that relationship is right this way, then you give yourself and your gifts to your church. But notice the progression. First this way, and then to his church, and then you give to other ministries. Then you give to other ministries. In keeping with God's will, to be ready to say fine. Now why do, we, why do we need to keep that in mind? Because it's like this. What if you get your paycheck. Maybe it's a big paycheck. But you pay my light bill. And you pay Brother Ben's car bill. And you pray for Brother Marvin's mortgage bill. And you pray uh, pay for Brother Borges uh, what? Uh, let me see. What do you have? A Cadillac? <laughs> you pay for everybody else. And you feel good because you help everybody else. And then the bill collectors start ringing your bell or calling your telephone. That's not good, right? Your first things first. And that's why as a church of God, first this way, a person who is in right relationship with God because of worship will want to take care of his church first and foremost, and then we can take care of ministry struggle. The stronger the home base, 
the more effective the ministry. Somebody say amen. Amen. The stronger we are at home, the stronger, the more effective will be outside the home. So let me conclude by saying Christ wrote Mary's biography that day. She never said a word. She never opened her mouth, but her biography was written that day by the very Lord Jesus Christ. Look at what Jesus said. Notice what he said. Whenever, where, whatever, whenever this gospel is preached in the whole world, what this woman has done will also be told as a memorial, isn't it? As a memorial to her. Listen. She left a legacy. She left a legacy. Would it be bigger? Jesus could brag about us like that. You want him to brag about you like that? Amen. Then give him the first verse. Think about it. The fragrance of the perfume has long since evaporated, but the memory of that woman will survive as long as the gospel is preached. Guess what? This happened many, many, many years ago, somewhere like over 2,000 years ago. And we're still reading about it. So two reasons, she has done a beautiful thing to me. And number two, she did what she could. She did what she could. And, you know, God, I don't think God is putting a, uh, unnecessary pressure on us. We're not to compete and compare at all. We're to do what we can. What does Jesus expect from us? What does he expect from me? Perhaps you might be thinking, I don't have anything of value to give him. Then give him just give him your life. Just give him your life as a living sacrifice. Give him your life. Give him your life and then watch him give you meaning and peace. Watch him give you a ministry and a purpose. Watch him give you a mission and a capacity for the whole. Watch God as long as you give first place. Meanwhile, a large crowd, and I'm about to wrap it up as we go into the Lord's Supper, keep this scripture in mind. Meanwhile, a large crowd of Jews found out that Jesus was there and came. They were attracted. They're not retelling their attack. And not only because of him, but also to see others who may have raised from the dead. You see, in this case, God wants to use each one of us to attract lost men and women, even religious people. Genuine worship will bring glory to God and souls to be saved. For on account of him, many of the Jews were given over to Jesus and, and putting their faith in him, putting their faith in Jesus. Now, who said, question, who said? I am the way, the truth, and the life. Who said that? He also said, and no man comes to the Father but us. So while God uses the situation with Lazarus, the miraculous resurrection of Lazarus, and while Lazarus is there enjoying fellowship and about to enjoy a sumptuous meal, and while Mary is involved in worship, God uses the life of man to bring people to Jesus Christ. And in spite of all our flaws, and in spite of all our flaws, and in spite of all our pain, I still say that God has a plan and a purpose for each one of us. Amen? Amen. He still does. May God give us a heart of worship. Your worship really does matter. And it really does make a difference. In a moment, I'm going to ask you to stand. And uh, my brother is going to put a song on the screen and as you see the words of the Spirit and as you hear the song, I'm going to ask you to consider something. I'm going to ask you to consider coming to the altar and singing that song unto Him as your act of your hand. You can right where you are. But if you feel in your heart that it would be a good symbolic decision, a good picture, when we stand, as my brother begins the song, would you consider coming to the altar and singing with me that song of worship, that song of praise unto the Lord? I'm going to ask the congregation to stand. Would you play the mother of the Lord?